Welcome back to the Malted Man Cave. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. And tonight we're going to be doing a special limited release in honor of the annual fish eel festival that goes on in Isla every year. This was a beauty that was released in 2016. Going up. All right, so we're back. And tonight, as I said, we're gonna be doing a limited release. I believe that this was released during the annual Fesh, Fesh Ale, and it's, it looks like it's spelled Fesh Isle or whatever, but it's Fesh, like fish, yeah. eel, but it looks like Face I-L-E, so it's yeah. Fesh Eel. It's an annual festival in Isla. Um, I believe it started in 1984, and it, I think the whole origin of it was that I think some people in Scotland were worried that Gaelic, the original kind of language, was going to become a lost Fame. language, mm -hmm. and so they kind of started this thing where they're going to—they were implementing the language and the arts and the culture so that they they want to get lost. And then it turned into, obviously, a huge Scotch thing with it being an Isla, which is right. one of the most well-known Scotch regions in Scotland. So this beautiful baby was released at the 2016 Fish Ale. Let's see if you can say it. You got like something on your face. <laughs> Fish. Fish ale. Fish ale. Oh, very good. Dude, what is that? Is it chocolate? I don't know. It's Thank probably you. from my like, daughter's teddy bear. <laughs> we, we, Why? <laughs> we, what am I doing with your daughter's teddy bear? Oh, no, you my tell bed. me. What are you doing? Amen. Dave was getting his notes on my couch, and my daughter has all of her toys and teddy bears all over the place. I think that must have been what it was. Oh, my gosh. Anyways... I'm a, I'm a motorboat. <laughs> so we're doing our bed Dark Cove um, committee release. So this comes in at 55% ABV. Um, it is non-chill filtered and there's no color added. So all the boxes are checked. So as I said again, thank you so much, George and Amy. You guys are incredibly, incredibly generous. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Actually, you you uh, left them out. You left that little intro out because this was the second time around. <laughs> yeah. This is like the third time around. Yeah, maybe <laughs> the third time around. It's been, so, a, it's so a do, the, do the little shout out to George. <laughs> um, Georgie Porgy and his beautiful wife, Amy. Um, gave us this bottle and actually a couple others. So we are incredibly, yeah. incredibly thank indebted you. to you. Thank you guys so much. Really good bottle. We won't ruin it. No spoilers. Um, anything else you want to say about this? Nope. No. Anything that you've heard about this? <laughs> uh, no, I, no idea. I like the bottle. Um, I, I do want to say it, it's awfully, it's awfully cold down in here in the, in the man cave. Down in the man cave? Down in your basement. It's because I'm fat, Dave. I have to keep. I get hot really easy. Dude, I uh, my body, I would be happy in in warm weather. Maybe not like Central Florida warm weather. Now, when I was skinny and good looking, I loved warm weather. But as as I age, you you you're, you start heading north. I love the winter. The winter months. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get on the nose? Oh man. The salty sea air, man, it makes me yeah. feel like I'm right just walking around a beach in Scotland. And it's just, right to my right is the, the, the sea splashing up against me. And to my left is this peat bog that is <laughs> swampy <laughs> and moist and uh, just... See, I also get barbecued meat, like, like a smokehouse, too. I got like the peat bogs. Should we fight? Read my no, notes. No, I did not read your notes. Um, I wrote. Really? Dave's always copying my notes. I wrote, uh, I said it was a peaty, warm, homemade whipped cream. Like if you took whipped cream and let your whisking up mm -hmm. and you threw in some, some peat moss <laughs> or whatever. What, what is it that they, uh, yeah. is it peat moss? Yeah, peat's just peat. Yeah, peat. And they, they take it and they dry it. Yep, dry it out and then and burn they it. they burn it, and that's how they dry the barley. Um, and uh, I, I was going to say, yeah, wow. what what you were saying... It's so full of flavor. Reminds me of being at a, um, a park, like a, a public park where they have those grills that you can bring your own charcoal. Yep. Reminds straight just barbecuing there at the, in the park. 
underneath some trees. Um, some fruits. It was hard for me to kind of decide what was what. Um, I know it was kind of raisiny and and at first I thought there was red apples in it. Um, I didn't get it as much like the second or third time around. Um, so it might have been just that initial, <clears throat> what did you say the ABV was? 55% ABV. Okay. So there's a little... <laughs> <laughs> I just knocked over a whole thing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> we both just watched it like... <laughs> glug, glug. I was just going to go with it. Glug, 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 glug. All just right. water. Just, just water. We're it's not going to cause black mold or anything. It, it, oh, wait. It can't go anywhere. It's not here in my basement. <laughs> it can't go anywhere. We're as low as we can go. <laughs> you got anything else on the nose? Um, no. no. So, this one is matured in bourbon and sherry. Really? Yeah. See, I didn't hardly but, get any bourbon notes. At... Yeah, it's mostly sherry. They actually even say, I think, in the marketing, it's the darkest ever. Like, they use these dark sherry casts, which... Some I don't really know what that means. Probably Pedro Jimenez or, you know, Oloros or Pedro Jimenez are yeah. the darkest. So yeah. I don't really know what they mean by that. And a lot of people have compared this to other natural colored art bags, and this is not the darkest that they've ever made. But nonetheless, it's an amazing whiskey, and it is dark color, and there is a heavy, heavy, heavy amount of sherry influence on this. So daddy like. Not so sh sure how much mommy like, but. So it reminds me a lot of my time when I was in Cuba and some of my other deployments Cuba. with the, with the Coast Guard. Like it just smells like I'm going to this smoky boathouse, like a boathouse, and like someone actually like something caught on fire. And there's a you know a fire going on, and then you smell those like marine characteristic notes. Oh yeah, like weathered line barnacles, and then you get all that sherry influence, like dates, raisins, figs. Like chocolate espresso. This is the weirdest note ever, but it reminds me of almost like the forest after it rains. I don't know, like something about like Aww. like a yeah pine, slight pine, like earthy. The uh... maple syrup, and then all those barbecue smoked meats, cured meats, honeyed ham, come in. Mm. It's, it's, I have a ton of notes for this. Black tar and vanilla Cavendish pipe tobacco. Mm. Do you remember the wharf? We yeah, 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 yeah. Vanilla Cavendish. Yes. When we went through our, yeah. our pipe smoking phase. So refined. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> if you have not smoked in like six months, if you smoke <clears throat> tobacco, pipe tobacco, it will literally feel like you're is on fire mm. it will burn all of your taste buds off we're doing it wrong <laughs> um last but not least i get mint um again dark chocolate and old spice deodorant mm. not really sure where that's coming from but a little spicy almost yeah. like flannel no i got gotcha. you what about the palate what'd okay. you get uh it mimics a lot of the uh the nose for me um fruits right off the uh right off the mm. bat That is amazing. Um, I wrote, I initially wrote that there wasn't really any burn, despite we we had planned to put a little couple drops of water in this, and, okay. we, and we didn't. No, no, it's fine. Because I spilled all the water. <laughs> That's what we did. And uh, th thanks, Keith. Um, but <clears throat> the burn is really, it's very sweet. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's, it like makes you like it. That it's that I, I think when I first gave it to Dave, he was like, "Whoa, <laughs> he's like that is Petey. Petey. I should have gave you a a, a palate Petey. cleanser. I should have wet your wet your whistle on something else before we went straight to <clears throat> almost um, cast strength. My next Pete note bomb. was just Earth Pete. <laughs> <laughs> just like you're just you're drinking some Pete. Earth. It's just Mother Earth. This you're is so good with words. Mother Earth, man of <laughs> man of many words. Dark Cove, Mother Earth's blood. <laughs> this is what this is what she bleeds. Um, black licorice. <laughs> what? Things are kind of weird in the Malted Man Cave. That is what she bleed. 
<laughs> Mother, no, I'm thinking like this is. It's the like bears coming. can smell them. I envision. The bears this. can smell the menstruation. <laughs> I, I envision this stuff like bubbling out of the ground. <laughs> Why? That's just my mind. Um, and then what? my last thing was, uh, I was trying to describe this. It tastes like salt water, but a uh, kind of a metallic um, taste to it. Mm hmm. A little bit of a metallic taste. I don't know what that's about. Go. Oh, man, that's flavorful. Treacle toffee, molasses, dark chocolate, like mocha espresso. You get all those like cured meats, honeyed ham meat yeah. notes, the smokiness, then all like the salty. Like after like it hits your palate, then after about four seconds, then all this like salty, briny goodness comes. Almost like chocolate covered strawberries. So like, again, I get a lot of chocolate notes from Sherry. Yeah. I don't know if other people don't always, but I just always get like chocolate, like figs, raisin notes from Sherry. You know what I get from Sherry? Sherry. <laughs> Dang it, I forgot to bring the sherry again. Remember I told you I bought a bottle of sherry. Oh, that's right. Next time. Yeah. Next time. Mm. Um, I get like almost, it's like this viscous, oily peanut oil. Mm. Is there a little bit, especially, yeah. it's almost more into the finish Man, where you get the see, peanut oil. Dude, I put, uh, I put, at first, I was thinking, man, this tastes like salt water that is around a oil spill. <laughs> Stop looking at my notes. <laughs> I swear to you. <laughs> the next I thing that I put you. was motor, it's almost like motor oil. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, I, I was- I thought you just looked at my notes no, no, and that's why you no, said No, I was thinking, man, this reminds me of like, Gulf of Mexico, uh, deep, <laughs> deep water horizon. Water in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like you're just scooping. like you can taste a little bit like the little sea otters swimming around in it. Yeah, the, about yeah. to die. No, I'm just. Kidding. I'm for mother. Did you know that that's all BS? And that what? one, that m all of those animals uh, are usually always killed because they're they don't recover even even after they wash them. What BS? So all the videos of like they being, like, like volunteers. Saved? They have volunteers do that because. You have 70 year olds coming down to be like, I'm gonna help. And they're like, go do this wildlife recovery thing. Yeah. Go clean these animals. Most of the animals die from shock yeah. within days. Um, it was crazy. When I was in boot camp in the Coast Guard, yeah. our CC commander, and I was actually very happy to see him go, he mm -hmm. got called away because he was our CC company commander, but he had to leave because he was like, a, I forget what the rating is now, the MO for the Coast Guard, we call it a rating. Um, he was like an environmental science or whatever. He's the one that goes and does like the <coughs> like with FEMA mixed with like all oh, the different okay. like aquamarine life and like saving mm -hmm. animals basically and yeah. pres preserving whatever the natural habitat and trying to fix it with all the oil. So he had to leave like half with you and I was like, bye Felicia, <laughs> don't come back. Keith, um, Keith hates the earth. <laughs> no. I hate the Coast Guard. I'm just kidding. I'm, I love the Coast Guard. He does love the Coast Guard. I did not enjoy it during boot camp, though. You know, oh. oddly enough, and look this up. This is not just me trying to make myself feel better about my branch. The Coast Guard is the second hardest boot camp. It goes Marine Corps, Coast Guard, I think, Na Army, Navy, and then Air Force. <laughs> Pretty sure. And look it up. It's because the way that they do, it's all about like fast, 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 fast. It's like more yeah. mental. Yeah. You know, whereas um, Marines, it's physical and mental. Now, I mean, you do physical stuff in the Coast Guard, but it is so, like, mentally taxing. Hmm. Um, anyways, um, either that or I'm just a wuss. It's probably that. No. Um, so motor oil. Again, mo mocha espresso. Burlap. I, don't, I get a lot with Isla whiskeys. I just get this, like, burlap -y Yeah, you do. Flannel shirt. Dryness. Woodiness weathered line and sackcloth um and lastly a little slight hint of mint a little mint just to trail it out just a little what you got the finish of mint um i 
man, it just wraps around your tongue like a little blanket of, <clears throat> of peat. <laughs> um, very, um, lot, lot of the same. Once again, for, for somebody new to, especially... <laughs> this is not for you. <laughs> if you're new to whiskey, do not get this. Well, it's not that you shouldn't get it. It's that I feel like... I feel like I don't understand, uh, or not understand, I don't have a lot of um, comparisons, or I, I don't know what I'm tasting, and um, I feel like you should appreciate, I can tell that this is something that you should appreciate. Um, medium finish for me, um, not as long, I, th I thought it went long, but it's it's medium. Um, and it leaves with uh, a lot of the sweetness that it had, um, and, but also kind of, I, I was going to say peppery, but it's got a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of kick to it. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's medium to long. You get all those chocolatey figs, raisins, mm -hmm. um, mocha espresso notes, the sweetness, and then like this oakiness, dryness mixed with the peat, the peppery, the burlap sack the flannel all that comes out and then lastly with like salted chocolate caramels and then a the little bit of mint along with the dryness in the background that's yeah. how it trails off for me um actually i'm gonna wait till after you give a score malted man cave mark what are you gonna give this out of 100 uh man so george dude thank you for this i didn't have a lot of it and so it, it was not wasted on me. It's not my favorite thing. I drink it, a lot of it. I shared it too with a lot of people. It's not my favorite thing. <clears throat> yeah, um, samples. I probably wouldn't spend the money on this. Um, maybe if I, you know what? It's just right now. Well, I mean, it's maybe got a lot a of sugar in it. So yeah. So I know that's not your favorite. Um, I'm going to say it's a, uh, a, a, a good, strong, sherry score of an 86. 86? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I that's mean, all good. A lot of times I think we think anything over, like, anything under 87 or 88 is, like, not a good score. Like, that's still, like, an 8.5. Like, a lot of people, when they if they do, like, out of 10, like, right. an 8 or 9 or 8.5, like, that's, a, like, a really good score. You don't have a lot of. We haven't. We haven't reviewed a lot of. I know. I know. And, and we need to start doing. And some. that's what it we need to throw some crappy whiskey like it's, in. That, I know. That's why it looks like it's heavy handed. Because, but there's so much good whiskey, and I like don't want to waste time reviewing the crappy stuff. But we I'll need. Buy, I'll buy us. Yes. Buy some we crappy. need to start bringing in the crappy stuff. Dave's crap whiskey. <laughs> Dude, we should totally make like a like a niche like this once a month. Dave's crappy whiskey day. Dave's, For Dave's crappy whiskey. I'll review. think of something clever. Um. <laughs> So 86 yeah. out of 100. 80, 86 because even I could tell that I was kind of out of my league as far as, uh, man, it's just so much. It's got, but I, I could tell there was craftsmanship behind it. I could tell that it was well done. It didn't, it, I didn't have any of the chemically burn <clears throat> kind of that. Yeah. Take this whiskey and hide it well for its heart has been matured in dark sherry casks. <clears throat> Importing waves of treacle toffee, coal tar, squid ink, noodles, and toasted coffee grounds. The darkest art bag ever. Which it's not the darkest, but yeah. it's pretty dark. Um, so this for me, thank you so much, George and Amy. This is a 91 out of 100. Ooh. It was almost even close to a 92. I really, 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 really like this stuff. But... Just because someone else, like, you like more bourbon matured stuff, so you like bourbon, and then the scotches you typically like are bourbon right. matured scotches. So, 86 is a very decent score. Mine is a 91, almost 92. How much do you think this bottle goes for now? Oh, man. Uh, 200 bucks? <laughs> a couple hundred bucks? People would be, like, super happy to get yeah. it. Yeah. Right now, like you can find this anywhere for like five to six hundred dollars. Now, I don't think George. Well, I hope he didn't. I don't think he but quite still. paid because if you get lucky and you just get it, you know, yeah. right from a store who got it. And the problem is, a lot Sex. of times they're snagged, and then you have to buy it on the secondary market, and people jack it up. 
Um, and most of these are pretty much long. Free market! Yeah, pretty much all these are pretty much <laughs> long gone. So all right. we are very honored to have gotten Thank to you. try this. Thank you, George. Um, so delicious stuff. There's another, there's a regular Ardbeg Dark Cove. And the difference is the Ardbeg Dark Cove, they have these different, you know, annual releases. Mm -hmm. So they have like the normal like 46% ABV or maybe a little bit higher. And then the committee release is just like higher almost cast strength version of the same thing oh man that sounds pretty See, that one is just like watered down right. and then this is just full strength show full octane question of the night brought to you from david bruns uh so i was thinking man um what is something from your childhood from your teenhood something from growing up in your community that is of the supernatural variety and is there a story that you have that um, intertwines you with that? What is the mythology? Favorite then, legend, myth, yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. And then how do you <clears throat> intertwine with it? Okay. So like at first I was thinking, you know, I used to love the story of like the Loch Ness Monster. I used to, my daughter is obsessed with Bigfoot. It is bizarre. If I literally pull up like YouTube videos of Bigfoot or like, my daughter just turned Thanks, four. George. Yeah. She will literally watch it for like hours. It's crazy. So those come to mind, but I think if I had to say my favorite, it's actually more of a local myth. In our town, we're from Springfield slash South Charleston, Ohio, and there is a bridge. And actually, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you where it is right now. No. Where is it? Uh, it's on a road called um, South River Road. So is that South Pitchin? Where is it? It's close to, it's out by the golf course. Okay. I'll pass it off. Yeah. So there is this legend, and, and I know it's not original to our area. I don't know if it started here, if it started somewhere else. I think a lot of states have their own version. Oh, of yeah. Every place Cry has baby it. bridge. Yeah. You know, the legend is, is that, you know, teenage mothers who got pregnant or, you know, whatever, that they took their babies that they had at a wedlock or that whatever, and they took the babies and they threw the babies, you know, over the bridge into the... The, the river and then the babies died obviously so and at night if you you're quiet hear, you, you can, can hear, hear the babies crying yes and so i believe in supernatural i don't i don't particularly and i could be wrong i'm not saying i'm i just i don't particularly believe in ghost as a lot of people in a lot of movies believe that like your your soul is like not at rest and you're you have unfinished business you have unfinished business i do believe in supernatural we're not going to get into that but i don't believe in ghosts as a lot of movies portray it the right. unfinished business anyways so i'm not really afraid of crybaby bridge but we went there and were you with us yeah <laughs> so, i remember you <laughs> don't ruin it so me and a bunch of buddies, we went just being lame, like 16 year old yeah. high school guys yeah. with way too much time on our hands. Yeah. And we drove and the couple of guys that we were with, I think it was Artie Thompson. Who else was there? Oh man, probably, uh, probably the basketball team. Mm -hmm. A couple other guys, maybe yeah. Daniel. Yeah. So anyway, so there's a bunch of guys here that believed in ghosts and believe in, in the myth. And so, you know, me just being the... Uh, this idiot, 16 year old. I just said, I'm like, I ain't scared. So I got out, you know, and they were like, they were like have all the lights on and they were like inching up going like three miles an hour, like driving by scared to death. So I got out and then I actually went under the bridge and I don't remember all the logistics behind it, but they were just killed going there. Keith, like I, I literally waited for like 15, 20 minutes and they're like, all right, Keith, like, come, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> Keith, if you're just kidding around, like this is kind of weird. Yeah, <laughs> like, all right, it's not funny anymore, yeah. man. Come on, man. No, I it's told uh, everybody, I was like, you have to be really quiet. To hear the babies cry. <laughs> so at some point, you know, when I knew it would sufficiently freak them out, like I, I jumped up from the bridge and I like, grabbed yeah. like the carter and they like freaked like little girls screaming. So that was one of my favorite myths and I thoroughly enjoyed scaring the crap out of them. So what about you? What is your That's favorite? So Myth or legend um, or story? When I was a kid, uh, <clears throat> we would go to this uh, farm, um, and it, you they they had camps there. Um, teach you how to um, saddle a horse, how to take care of a horse. You would be responsible for a horse all week. Skyview or somewhere else? Somewhere else, <clears throat> and uh, we would go there as. Um, for, for for church, we would have like all the guys that 
all the seventh and eighth grade guys or all the fifth and sixth grade guys would go there for like a weekend and have like all these different things happen. Well, my, uh, our counselors were really awesome guys. Like they were dads of, my dad was one and, and uh, another one was Jim Bayless. I don't know if you ever remember Jim Bayless. <clears throat> and uh, they told us the story of the Zanesfield Wild Mountain Man. And it was this crazy guy that How escaped you? from a mental hospital in Zanesfield and has been living in the hills ever since. And uh, <clears throat> you, and he's like... he's They killed, sold it? Yeah, well, and they didn't tell us a lot about it. We just, like, he killed a bunch of people. That's why he was in the mental hospital. And, like... He, they, That's they, the worst. They just tell you, like, a little snippet yeah. of it so you think about like, it. Like, they, uh, they just said... Um, probably sixth grade, fifth or sixth grade. So literally, Jim, like I was a senior in high school. <laughs> Jim Bill is just like looks at us and he's like, he's out there in the woods. You cannot go out by yourselves. It you have to have a buddy with you. Um, nobody goes out alone. And then he says, and how you know if you're going to be the next one that that the Zanesfield Wild Mountain Man gets is there will be a rock under your pillow. <laughs> so and they put so rocks under your every head. night we're like <laughs> like flipping the pillow no. over like the black spot and uh and how they got us was one of the older boys that was um <laughs> like senior high that was helping be like yeah. a count junior counselor they put a pebble or a rock under his pillow the first night <laughs> and he disappeared and it was really what? he just he had he, he was only there for one day and then he had to go home and they made but they didn't tell you that. no <laughs> no not. yeah so he was gone and we're like why are you not worried about where he is <laughs> anyways so that, there's there's times that like i want to mess with my kids with something yeah. and like it's almost not worth the blowback because then they're like afraid of everything and like trying to get into your bed and like do you oh. ever have that like you want to oh, like yeah. joke around and mess with your Dude. kids and scare them but then i'm like this is gonna backfire if I scare him too much. Look up Ghostbusters, the the cartoon series, the the boogeyman. And and so Ben started like he wanted to watch this this show and it's a cartoon and I watched a couple of them. They're not really scary monsters. Just to make sure it wasn't too scary, yeah. Dude, Google that <laughs> that image. Well, Kate saw it. Oh, she's been having nightmares. Oh man. It was it's Yeah. It's like, and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I just want to take that image out of her little, her little beautiful brain. Yeah. yeah. So tell us what your guys' favorite legends, myths, or scary stories are. It's actually kind of a good theme. What we're talking about, kind of like the fish ale yeah. festival. The Scottish people are known for being very superstitious. There you go. So, um, yeah, ninety. Put a, put a, put yeah, tell us the stories you guys have. Your favorite stories from your childhood or whatever. Yeah. Ninety-one out of hundred for me. It definitely. Buy if you can't. I would not pay five six hundred dollars on the secondary market. This is an amazing whiskey. I would if I if I was wealthy, or you know extremely wealthy, I'd pay two three hundred bucks for this, but not five or six hundred dollars. There's not a whole lot of whiskey that I ever would pay that much for. But very good, malted man cave approved. Go and get you some. Thank you guys as always for watching. Um, like subscribe. Leave us a question of the night. And as always, slasha.